Now let me start off this series of conceptual radiology by addressing uh, a few misconceptions about radiology as far as the neat PG entrance exam is concerned. And I intend to do this to put radiology in the correct perspective. Now why am I here? Now the most important reason why I am here is because I sincerely believe it is extremely unfair on the part of MBBS graduates as far as the subject of radiology is concerned. Why do I think so? Because you know you will all agree with me when I say that radiology is never ever taught to us in our undergraduate course, isn't it? Now no one ever teaches you, you know, how to interpret a particular radiograph or a CT scan or an MR image. This scenario changes entirely when you come and face your neat PG entrance exam. <coughs> now, as soon as you finish your internship, your examiners suddenly assume that you know everything about radiology and then in your entrance exams you are asked image based questions. Maximum of those image based questions are radiology based questions. So on one hand they never teach you anything about radiology, on the second hand they suddenly assume you know everything about radiology and then you are you know challenged with radiographs not just that but even with CT scan, MR and even ultrasound images and this is extremely unfair. Now the reason why I am here today is to bridge this particular gap between what we are taught and what is expected from us. So starting today by the time we reach the end of these sessions this gap will not exist as far as you students are concerned who are going to prepare for the neat PG entrance exam. So this is the most important reason why we have come up with this particular channel. Now a very important misconception that I need to address about radiology here is that radiology is frequently taught and therefore it is frequently perceived as being an overtly factual subject and seemingly this seems to be true again because what comes to your mind when you think of radiology? We think of all the named signs and appearances say for example your bird's beak sign seen in achalasia cardia, your string sign which is seen in Crohn's disease, your floating water lily sign which we see in hydrated cyst right and another type of questions is you know your factual investigation questions like what is the investigation of choice, what is the first investigation, best investigation, gold standard, least useful, right. So all these you know make radiology a seemingly factual subject. Radiology believe me on the other hand the truth is it is an entirely conceptual subject. Radiology I would say is based on some beautiful core concepts and all the radiology factuals that we come across are actually based on these core concepts. Radiology therefore must be taught and must be learned as a conceptual subject. Now let me illustrate this by using a few examples. Now believe it or not the Silhout sign that you must have studied in chest radiology is actually a factual topic which is based on a core concept which is called as differential radiographic density theory. Not only this rather almost 90 percent of all your named signs and appearances that you come across in radiology are based on this beautiful core concept of differential radiographic density theory. Now your acute radiation syndromes in general radiology are based on the law of radiobiology. Your radionuclides which are used for different different systems there is a concept as to why a particular radionuclide is used for a particular system imaging all your investigation of choice, first investigation, gold standard investigations these questions are based on the understanding of the basics of each and every modality and how it is applied in clinical practice. Let me illustrate this by using a common you know topic in general radiology and that is the topic of acute radiation syndromes. Now what happens if I walk into a CT scan room and the CT scan machine is working, my entire body is exposed to radiation. Now when my entire body is exposed to radiation does the entire body af is affected by radiation to, a, to the same extent? The answer is no. There are some tissues in the body which are affected earlier or to a greater extent, some tissues are affected later or to a lesser extent. Now that is the reason that is one you know reason why different radiation syndromes have evolved. 
So, for example, the first radiation syndrome you must have studied in that is that, that is formed in the body or that is uh, created is the acute hematopoietic syndrome. This is seen at a threshold dose of hardly around 1 to 2 grays at such a small threshold dose. The next organ system affected in the body is the GI tract producing the acute GI tract syndrome. Right? It is seen at a threshold dose of somewhere around 6 to 10 grays. One of the last systems to be affected in the body is the central nervous system producing the CNS syndrome at a threshold dose as high as around 20 grays. Now, this is a factual topic. You need to remember the syndromes, you need to remember the threshold doses. So, what we do not know is that this factual topic of acute radiation syndromes is actually based upon a beautiful core concept in radiology, which is called as the law of radiobiology. One component of the law of radiobiology is also called as law of Bergoni and Tribondu. Now, what does this law of Bergoni and Tribondu tell us? It tells us that you know whatever tissue or organ or region in the body has the maximum proportion of undifferentiated cells or cells that are in active mitosis, this system or organ or region will be most sensitive to radiation. So, just think whatever system has the most undifferentiated cells or cells in active mitosis will be affected first. Now, if you use this as a concept and you think about now what system will be affected first in the body, you would logically realize that it is going to be the hematopoietic system and that is the reason why you get acute hematopoietic syndrome as the first acute radiation syndrome. The next system in logical order is going to be the GI tract. Why? Because it is the mucosal layer of the GI tract, which is actually a cell of con actually a layer of constantly dividing cells. The from the basal layers, the cell eventually divide and they come to the superficial layers, right? We know that. And therefore, this is the first layer to be affected. This gives rise to the acute GI tract syndrome. Most common symptom of GI tract syndrome is diarrhea. <coughs> in the CNS, if you think on the other hand, there is minimal cell proliferation. Right? The only proliferation that exists in the CNS is the proliferation of the glial cells and therefore, CNS is relatively radio resistant and therefore, acute CNS syndrome is seen at a very high threshold dose. Right? Now, those we have seen that CNS is radio resistant. Now, if you remember, you must have read that radiotherapy is a very important treatment modality for brain tumors. Now, I have just said that CNS is radio resistant, but how is it that radiotherapy is an important treatment modality for brain tumors? Think of the law of Bergoni and Tribondu and you would realize that what is a tumor? A tumor is a mass of actively proliferating cells and the law says that whenever a cell is in active mitosis, it is sensitive to radiation. So, what happens in the CNS is that the tumor cell is sensitive to radiation because it is actively dividing, whereas the normal CNS tissue is radio relatively radio resistant and this in fact is a therapeutic advantage. A specific type of radiotherapy which is used for treatment of brain tumors is what is called as stereotactic radiotherapy. We will have a look at this radiotherapy details in a later session. Every video that will be published as a part of this particular channel which will have certain multiple choice questions at the end of that video, so that we can have a high yield revision at the end of that particular video. Now, let us have a look at a few recently asked questions on these topics that we have just discussed. Now, one of the questions which was asked was acute hematological syndrome occurs at a threshold dose of options were 2 grays, 10 grays, 20 grays and 50 grays. The correct answer we just discussed a few minutes earlier is that acute hematological syndrome is the first syndrome seen in the body and it occurs at a threshold dose as low as around 1 to 2 grays. So, A 2 grays is the correct answer. Now, stereotactic radiotherapy they asked is used for the treatment of options were brain tumors, intracranial AV malformations, trigeminal neuralgia or all of the above. We have just discussed stereotactic radiotherapy is used for the treatment of brain tumors. 
HPS, but it is also used, remember, for the treatment of intracranial AV malformations and for the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia as well. The answer to this question is all of the above. Friends, a lot of time and effort goes into making of these videos. So, we would be more than pleased to know your feedback, your reviews, whether you liked it, whether you would want a particular topic to be discussed as a part of this series, right? so that we can incorporate those topics in the later sessions. Let us rock radiology with conceptual radiology.